Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, it's brought to you by Linode, the best hosting company out there that I've worked with for over eight years now. They've just opened up a new location in Mumbai. So anybody that's trying to set up a business in India, make sure you give them a look. They're going to save you a lot of money over Azure and AWS. Also, they have pricing plans that work with pretty much anything that you want to do. So if anything you want to do runs on Linux, which is pretty much everything, then you can do it with a Linode uh, account. All right, guys, so in this video, we're going to be looking at React versus Angular. And unlike other videos out there that are comparing the two, I actually want to make this a little bit different than um, just talking about specific ind individual features of the two libraries slash frameworks. And um, let's first just go ahead and, and dispel some myths that are out there. One of them being that React is just a library where, where uh, Angular is considered to be a full-fledged framework. Um, so here are the two different websites. You have Angular and then you have react angular was originally created by the guys over at google and that was one of the big selling points to the project when it first came out react was created by the guys over at facebook and again another selling point for using that library now a lot of people will tell you that in order to use angular you have to know typescript and that is mostly correct but these day this day like um you might as well learn typescript anyway i've actually been saying that typescript is just as important to know as javascript because it seems like most large shops are now using them interchangeably in the same way that we use uh even javascript and jquery interchangeably these days so knowing how to use typescript is is almost imperative but with angular you're pretty much forced to use typescript because you really don't want to use it if you don't like typescript and TypeScript, just so you guys know, is um, it's basically a uh, superset of JavaScript that compiles down to raw JavaScript, but it gives you things like interfaces um, and has a, a different type of class-based system than uh, what has been proposed uh, recently with the JavaScript language. Although um, there's other things that TypeScript gives you as well. Just having type safety can prevent you from uh, going to production with a lot of bugs that TypeScript will catch for you right away. Now, while Angular is a full-fledged framework, React is not. But when we talk about using React, companies that make the adoption to React, they're actually using React for everything that it has to offer, which includes uh, things like Redux for, uh, for shared maintenance or state maintenance um, amongst components and the React ecosystem. You have things like React Router uh, for client-side routing. A lot of this stuff is already built in and, and, and in the box for you with Angular. Whereas React, they're kind of separate projects that you end up tacking on. Um, which one is actually better is always going to be a personal preference. I've actually worked with both quite a bit. I've worked with React uh, more professionally, like in a professional sense for the last five years. Uh, whereas Angular just doesn't seem to be uh, as competitive right now. All right, so when we look at jobs, that's a very important factor when like determining how are you going to spend your time. Uh, because even if you love something, if there's no opportunity in it, then it's not a good it's not gonna be a good choice now both react and angular are somewhat killing it when it comes to client-side development uh, but when we do look at the largest job site in the united states which is indeed currently they have the most listings a lot of it is garbage i admit because there's so many different uh recruiters and stuff that spam this website it's absolutely terrible in a lot of sense uh, but it is one of the most accurate gauges that we have and if we look at the available listings right now there's currently sixty thousand seven hundred seventeen. Uh, that match React. Now, clearly that's not all React jobs, but for the most part, if you look at this, it's all senior software engineers and such. So uh, that gives you a pretty good idea. Now, Angular is a more uh, unique term, I would say. So uh, possibly there's going to be some matches in there for React that, that aren't quite you know, React development. And then whereas Angular, you're not going to have that. However, you do only have 15,000 jobs for Angular, and the, the variation there is not that wide. So clearly there are way more jobs in React right now. Now, when it comes to salaries, that's another important factor. Some of the most uh, highest paying jobs out there are, are the uh, jobs that don't have a whole lot of developers for them, like Golang, uh, Scala. Scala is one of the highest paid uh, development jobs right now on average uh, because there's just not a whole lot of developers out there. And the companies that are using that stuff are really trying to use it for its functional purpose. Uh, but anyway, if we look at payscale.com, which is one of the closer estimates that we can have for how much does an average React JavaScript developer make? According to payscale.com, it's 91,000. And if we look at the same thing for Angular, it's 72,348. So it would seem that also uh, React developers are paid more than Angular developers for some uh, unknown reason. And it's probably a lot to do with demand since there are more jobs and opportunity with React, meaning 
um, that there is a lot of demand for it. Now, React hasn't been around that long, so both of these projects are new, but Angular is slightly older than React, um, and, uh, and React definitely came on the market after Angular 1.3 was really blowing up. Now, when we look at the history of these two projects, how much do they change? How much do you have to relearn the ecosystem over and over again? One of the things that pissed people off so much about Angular was that when Angular 1 came around, 1.3 was the last stable version before they decided to go with an Angular 2.0. And the reason why they went with a complete rewrite for Angular 2.0 was because Angular started getting a reputation as being a complete mess once you started getting into complex code bases with you know hundreds or thousands of components which you commonly see these days with react applications angular was really falling on its face with 1.0 so they decided to scrap the entire thing which i felt was a knee-jerk reaction to react gaining popularity and they ended up writing angular 2.0 with uh typescript explicitly making sure that, that basically all the documentation was for typescript and that really rubbed developers the wrong way because typescript at that time uh, and this was probably 2015 or so, maybe earlier. Uh, TypeScript was not nearly as popular, and a lot of people were like, "May you know, I don't know that I want to learn another language to have to to use this framework." <clears throat> so here is just one particular article about how people were pissed off about having to relearn the framework over and over again. If I go all the way back to React's history, there's been quite a few changes with React, like when they started uh, implementing the class-based system. Uh, now we have things like React hooks. And a lot of people, but it, there was never any sort of complete rewrite on how to use uh, React. So I honestly think when it comes to backwards compatibility, React probably wins there as well. All right, when it comes to community and like how many companies are actually using Angular right now, some of these Fortune 500s include JP Morgan, Autodesk, which makes uh, like fantastic software for architecture and like uh, 3D animations and such. McDonald's is running their website. Marshall's big, uh, big store. Honeywell's considered a big. A lot of big Fortune 500s are using Angular, right? Now, when we talk about what companies are using React, they also have an equally impressive share of companies that are using it. A lot of uh, fan companies, like companies like Netflix, are using it. Uh, clearly, Facebook's using it because they developed it. They've been using it since 2011, before it was even really a public thing. Uh, but it's also used with Instagram, Skype, Walmart, Tesla, Airbnb, and more. Now, when it comes to mobile development, both options, um, really React is probably going to win because React has a project called React Native, which has actually been used in the wild uh, for quite some time that uses the React way of creating components and, uh, and, and passing data from those components uh, to each other. That same that same ecosystem, that same uh, development mentality actually transfers over to mobile app development a little bit easier. Now, with Angular, you do have something like native script that you can do to create mobile applications using an Angular code base, but React Native probably wins over that as more of an adopted standard uh, that is actually being used by more companies right now. Now, assuming you wanted to get into virtual reality as well, React also has React VR, which they're calling React 360 now. Uh, but Angular, as far as I know, does not have any sort of uh, similar tool. So I would have to say if you're going to do mobile development and virtual reality or one or the other, probably both aren't even the best option to do that. I would probably just go native myself. But um, React Native has, uh, you know, React Native and React VR seem to be a little bit more full featured than anything Angular has. All right, when it comes to question and answers, because that can be really important when it comes to learning a new language, one of the problems I had when I learned Perl was that there was a million ways to do the same thing, even some like very monotonous things. There was like a million different ways of doing it, and everybody thought they were so clever having so many different ways of doing it, where Python had like a one Pythonic way of doing it. But Stack Overflow really directed me to that Pythonic way better than other sites. So Stack Overflow is probably the biggest gauge, right, of... Uh, question and answer type things of how do we get information when we run into problems using the library. So if we look at Stack Overflow, the largest question and answer site, Stack Overflow has 153,786 questions right now for React. And Angular has an advantage over that of 177,772. The only caveat to that would be that there is a lot more documentation on Angular because it's older and also because there's so many different versions. There's Angular before TypeScript and there's Angular after TypeScript. 
And I suppose now the same thing could be said for React, uh, but um, yeah, Angular would have to win when it comes to question and answer. Now also on a very basic rudimentary uh, Google search, if you do AngularJS, you get 23 million results approximately. And on React, just slight of 20 million. So they're very, very neck and neck, especially for two libraries that are um, you know, of the same maturity. And just for the record, Angular has only been around slightly longer than React, roughly about a year. All right, guys, so just a few other things to mention. When it comes to file size, React is going to be smaller than Angular because it comes with a whole lot less, and that's because React is a library, whereas Angular is considered to be a full-featured framework. Uh, but as you tack on more stuff to your React project, you'll find your bundle gets a lot bigger. I've seen like 16.8 meg of, uh, of bundled files for a React application before. So like it, it can get really, really unwieldy uh, very quick. So you have to be careful with both of the frameworks that you can get it bogged down. When it comes to actually speed between the two, they're both JavaScript being executed on JavaScript engines. Um, Angular's two-way two data binding is a little bit more complex, I think, when it comes to uh, learning curve compared to React's uh, unit, unidirectional data flow or um, single direction data flow. Basically, React, when a child changes, there's a complicated diffing state that basically can pick up on different parts of the DOM that have changed and only re-render uh, the certain portion of the DOM that, that needs to be re-rendered. Angular can do the same thing. The, the thing is, though, is that no matter what, the learning curve of both of these applications is going to be very, very difficult for you when it comes to building really, really large, full-feature commercial applications. So depending on, I really just suggest that you try both of them out and just pick one and see which one you like. Most likely, if you decide that you're an Angular guy, you're going to be kind of focused on just Angular stuff, and you're not going to be switching back and forth between React and Angular. Once you pick one, you're probably going to want to specialize in that. Um, these days, it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of people that are like, yeah, I'm an Angular person and a React person. It seems like people just kind of started picking like, okay, I'm either a React person or I'm an Angular person. And that's why this decision... I think carries a lot of weight. So I, I factored in salaries, jobs, and um, I think based on where things are going, React seems to be dominating Angular at this moment.